Hello and welcome to MotoGP Mac. It's our one year anniversary. Yes, 52 weeks of podcast. I know, man. Jesus. Yeah, putting up with this. And, wow, we, we really did thank you all because we've really had a, a good set of fans. You know, we've developed a lot of really good fan, knowledgeable fans. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And listen, look, we need to give a shout out to the fanboys as well, our brand boys, as, as we're now going to call them. Yeah, yeah, brand boys. Yeah. Uh, listen, look, I, 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 I always am very um so i'm always very brand proud i will be a thing but i'm also very hard on my brand if i expect them to win you know yeah i want them to win but if they're not winning they're gonna get it you know and if you can't aim for peace you aim straight between the eyes yeah <laughs> that's what I said you know and um, but anyway Aston grand prix weekend what did you think of it overall it was a good it was a good race um it just it's like I said. It was. It's a good way to go out. Uh, Bagnaia is on top. He's the champ. He's really coming together as a champion. You notice that though. He's comfortable in his own shoes. Now he, a, he just he doesn't seem to be that nervous Nelly that he usually was. There was a comment at the start of the weekend when FP one Bagnaia was way off FP two. Then he he seemed to pull it back together and. You just knew it was a matter of time before he would sort out the issues yeah. that he was going through. And I think there's a big difference, you're right, in Banyoya this year is that he is a lot more comfortable in the limelight. Whereas last year, it was all pressure. And remember, this point last year, this is when the comeback started. Do you know what I mean? This very yeah. race, when mm-hmm. he started to, to close things out. I think, you know... I think there's a good good relationship in Ducati between Ducati and I thought it was very interesting the thing that Gigi said during the week where they were talking about team orders and uh, they asked Gigi about team orders and Gigi basically said, he's like, if there's another manufacturer involved, say KTM, yeah, we would look at and the others were not so close to Peko, mm-hmm. just say. We would look at team orders for sure, 100%. Do you know what I mean? However, if it is between three Ducatis, there's no team orders. They're free to race. Because the brand is still going to win anyway, right? Right. Do you know what I mean? So I thought it was a very interesting thing because they were all talking about Joe, Joe Martina, obviously, who was... Who was on fire in Germany? Not so on fire this weekend, do you know what I mean? But on fire in Germany, and definitely, um, how would I say? I thought it was interesting to understand what is the dynamic. You know, Martin is 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 a pissed off teenager. Do you know what I mean? He didn't get what he wanted. <laughs> you know, he seemed to calm like, down, though. Don't you think? I think he. I think he. He. He is, but I think. I think he's still he's still pissed off. Do you know okay. what I mean? So I still I still I still believe that there is a massive chip on his shoulder. Still. So I think it'll be I think it'll be interesting to see how the dynamic will will go. What's very clear to me from his his wording over the weekend is that he, the Yamaha factory ride has gone out the window. Hundred percent. Did he say we'll run that by me again? He's, I think our, the F- Yamaha factory ride for Martin is gone out the window. Gone out the window. Okay, yeah. He said he he openly admitted he's like, so why would I change? Yeah, you know what I mean. I have a lovely team, works bikes, everything I need here. Why would I change that? And that's probably the best decision that he is going to make uh, for the long term. Now, this weekend also. And before people ask me or say eat humble pie, Mac, uh, <laughs> Yamaha did do a very good race weekend, solid. Right. I think you know, they brought a little bit of innovation. They brought back their Stegosaurus wings that they tried last year, but still never used. And again, Joe, like Fabio did use the, I'm going to call it the, the table wing. Yeah. Uh, in the previous one, and like this is because horsepower doesn't really matter on both circuits where they were at. Now, if the if the inline four was ever going to match the V four, 
this is the circuit right. where it would do it. Do you know what I mean? It is mm -hmm. an anomaly circuit. It has a lot of fast flowing high speed corners, not yes. a lot of major acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so think what you could 100% see where Fabio's issues are. And Fabio's issues still are is that the, that engine does not accelerate fast enough. Right, right. And I which know we which had is a, normal for, by the way, that's a normal situation for when you're running out of development. When you run out of development, you get you, you what you what you lose, okay, is the bottom end torque because you can't get both. Yeah, but I think I, I, I genuinely look. I think you know the the V four and the inline four. This was the place where it showed an awful lot of. Um, where the characteristics of those engines change, right? Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I really, really noticed is, is that how Ducati have closed that cornering speed gap to Yamaha. Oh, God, yes. I mean? Yes. Do you know what I mean? KTM, you could see, you could still see um, when Fabio was behind Binder, you could still see that Fabio was able to run him harder through the fast corners. But Binder had the horsepower to make sure that when he was getting out of the corners, he could drive away from him, literally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, now, this is where I believe that Ducati is, is, is fucking dangerous. Like, do you know what I mean? Because I, and Pecco especially. And now I know Bisecchi was really fast on Saturday, but when you look at, 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 at Pecco's lines, they're very similar to the lines Fabio runs. Right. And in line four, but Peko's on a V4. So I think Peko has understood, and the other writers kind of say this about it, understood how to make a V4 like an inline four in fast corners, mm -hmm. but how to use the V4 power coming out at low end torque from the engine. So for me, like I've just, I was watching the race more so in awe of go back five or six years ago, you know, a Ducati going into a roundabout was their fucking worst nightmare or <laughs> going through a fast bend was their worst nightmare because they were just going to try and fucking, they had to use the, the, the long, no, 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 hold on. the long fast corners, okay, the, mm -hmm. the long arcing fast corners they were good at. Yeah. It was when they got tight. That's when it really, that's when it, they yeah. were up. Yeah. But they, if you remember, they they were having to use the rear tire a lot to turn that rear and rear end of the bike in those fast corners. Yeah, oh, for but the now, tight, for the tight ones, they'd have to. No, no, no. For the tight ones, they couldn't get the fucking thing stopped. First, yeah. right, and then secondly, do you know what I mean? It just didn't want to turn. Whereas, mm -hmm. right, exactly. In the, in the long arcing corners, they had to spin up the rear tire more to turn. Right. Well, oh, yeah, now, yeah. now they don't. So they found the flexibility in the, in the frame, right? In fast corners to turn. <laughs> so for me, when I look at it, it's just kind of like going, oh, this is how dangerous Peko is. And I saw a picture actually of Bisecki. And I, I'll share it with you on WhatsApp. But my God, does he look like Rossi? And just in that picture, that fucking divilment in the eyes, and yeah. and I'm like going, yes, I do believe Peko and Bisecki are going to go to war at some stage, friendly war, but it's going to be a battle between them. Martin, I'm just not sure can he keep it up. Does that make sense? I think something yeah, will happen. The toys yeah. will go out of the fucking pram, and uh, I think now. I'm going to, I, I find it very ironic that last week we brought up about the green paint and penalty. Yes. Yeah. And fucking Brad Binder on the last lap. Now, okay, in the sprint race, he had three or whatever the warnings is, two warnings or whatever it was. And he touched the paint and you're kind of going, okay, all right, fair enough. I did it. I did it twice or whatever it was and I did it again kind of understand that do you know what I mean but you're fucking fighting for a podium you kiss a bit of the green yeah and you're done 
Now, Martine, who was behind uh, Alicia Spagro, if you look at the replay, also ran off. Yes. Yes. I noticed I said I noticed that myself a second ago. But he was not penalized. I I, I assume the penalty the penalty was coming later. It didn't get penalized at all. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. And the official And, and you know what else I noticed, by the way? The, listen, the, why in the world it's just the simplest thing is that you have the side paint with the, the I guess it's called I'm getting, probably getting this wrong with the perpendicular where you have the red the red lines, the white lines, and the green lines. And then you have the other line that goes on the edge of the road, which is also green. So when they hit the green spots, they don't it's the exact same color. So there's no differentiation in color. Yeah, but How that's stupid is that. Because there's some points of it where of the track yeah. where the cur the where the, there's the curb and a curb comes back in, right? And it goes green. Mm-hmm. And then there's right. just the white line. And it's yep. Yeah, but look for me, I am like going. Like, it's just fucking retarded. To be very honest, now if someone if someone flies off the fucking road, right, mm-hmm. cuts the corner and gains an advantage, you're like, okay, right, no problem, no issue with that. But where I have a massive problem with it is like there was no advantage gained. Do you know what I mean? You no. have a fucking, you have a, a rider in the stewards team that clearly is not going, lads bit of fucking common sense here now please you know I, mean? I know rules are fucking rules right but uh you know there's no advantage game like you look at pedro costa i don't know did you see the moto 2 race right pedro costa lost the front of the bike right lost the front end of the bike ran over the thing right so saved it ran over the thing and because he didn't lose a second between the last corner and the line he got a fucking long lap, right? And you're like, one second now, this was not true. He lost the front end of the fucking bike. Like, he was already fucking penalized by <laughs> losing the front end of the bike. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, will you fucking come on? And then when he did his long lap, he touched the white line doing his long lap and he didn't get a second long lap. Yeah, yes, yes. Do you know what I mean? And you're like going, lads, will you just fucking... So and you Freddie are just, Spencer, like I said, three times world champion, fastest rider, second fastest rider of all time. He should know better. This isn't 100%. some. This is not somebody coming all out of the stands who has a scooter, Chinese scooter, doesn't know any better. You know. Yeah. Where, you no. Know, like I was, I was. To be honest, I was, I was fucking raging. Do you know what I mean? When, when, when I saw Binder's thing. And then it, it infuriated me even more when you're like, okay, we're going to fucking demote him one place <laughs> and then we're not going to fucking do anything to the other fella behind. And I'm just like going, <laughs> you know, it, it, like it really, really bothers me. Like if someone cut the gap and went onto the green and it was to an advantage or they had already got warnings for going off the track, I can 100% say fine right you know what i mean but it, none of them had w- track warnings you know what i mean up the front <laughs> and they touched it in the last lap you're back yeah. for a fucking place come on it's like the first lap you don't penalize someone going off on the first lap yep the last lap should be the same unless there's a, a, a an unbelievable advantage and really really got under my fucking skin when i see shit like that going on but anyway um, Correct me if I'm wrong. Also, wasn't it before where you had the rumble strip on the side where they had that that the, the, the red and green paint, red, white, and green? That's mm-hmm. what you had to stay on. You couldn't go off of that, right? It's exactly yeah. But the green, what the was green, wrong with that system? We didn't. It wasn't a. It didn't seem there, to be there, a problem. There, there were some circuits where you could go on the other side of the green, and it would give you an advantage. <laughs> Well, then you just make it also a- also the problem as well with that jake is that a lot of circuits farm by the one carriers are also and they have how would you say there there was a thing with farm by the one was that all four tires had to, at one stage all four tires 
had to be within circuit bounds, but the curbing was circuit bounds, whereas now Formula One have brought that back to the white line, right? But what you could technically do is you could run your car right out to the green side of it. Do you know what I mean? Um, but look, that's neither here. Excuse me, that's neither here nor there. I think it was. Um, it just it just, it just gets on the way. I I get it. Either make it the white line, or draw to me. But none of this fucking shit towards the end of a race, when especially when people are battling for the serious positions. Um. But yeah. Um. Anyway. Tough weekend for uh for Yamaha. You know, you know uh Franco. You know, okay, he was up the grid, but uh, up in ninth. But I think. You know, that was because everyone crashed ahead of him. Um, <laughs> and then Quadraro. It looks like he lost the front. He was riding so hard, though. Oh, my God. Come on. Uh, yeah. He when was, you yeah. said you said When you said Yamaha made advances, uh, to me, I said, I looked at it as Fabio made advances because he rode so hard. He, I mean, he did. Yeah, but I think I when I looked at it, like, Coming into this race weekend, if the if the inline four was going to work anywhere, it was going to work here, right? And right. to be fair, you know, Franco on the Yamaha didn't do much. You know, Fabio on the Yamaha did. The circuit played into an awful lot of the strengths of the bike. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I would I would have expected it from from uh, from Fabio, but. Yeah, I think it's it's a fucking depressing time to be a Yamaha fan, to be honest. Like, um, well, Honda is the really. I mean, if you're a Honda fan, you got to be God. You got to have a river of tears. Well, yeah. Look, Marquez not riding. So, like, look, it was a strange weekend because he did FP one, FP two on the Calyx, and then for qualifying. Qualifying, he then used the um, not the original Honda frame that Nakagami is on. With the original Honda frame, how you know it is, is that it has it has the weld across the spur, mm-hmm. right? And a weld going up towards uh, the fuel tank, right? Um, but he wasn't on that one. He was on the, his special one that only he had um, for the race, and. Yeah, man, like I, like, I genuinely don't know what to think of it because, like, Mark has gone out, and this is fucking crazy stat, right? Of all the main races this year, right? So the Sunday races, let's just call it. Mark hasn't finished one. And, and, and the thing is, the last two, he has more or less quit. Don't tell me that he, if he, if he was his normal self, he would have not. He'd have jumped on them bikes. He would have, yeah, yeah. Well, look, when did you ever hear of Mark Marquez finishing in what twentieth place or fucking yeah, seven, yeah, exactly, place or whatever in a race? Even, even with fucking broken bones, he used to be pushing it right. But yeah, I think, I think he's lost a bit of faith, a lot of faith actually. That's um, what I mean. Yeah. Um, you know, has the Calic chassis worked? No, it's fucking injured an awful lot of them. Oh. Do you know what I mean? I'm wondering how much is the, the Calyx, how much time they're giving him. Is it just being dictated to Calyx? You know, you never know with Honda's ego. So I'm going to break something now for you. So the original frame that... Honda brought out was Honda's own one. So the one T with the thing up the, the weld up. Yeah. The frame that Mark was riding in Portimao and they gave to Rins for Argentina, etc. That was from a company called TSR. Look at you, detective. So that was in conjunction. Now it is not major news that Honda used TSR because there's also there was always a, a there is a thing I think it's like motor wacky. Yeah there's more TSR wacky, yeah there's motor wacky but there's also TSR Hondas about yeah. so but that frame my understanding is from TSR. But isn't TSR a Honda company? It is yeah 
but it's they so are it's more or less to, on the. It's not. No, it would be still be a separate outsource. To it. It it, would, right. Yeah, right. Technically, it's it's an outsource, but it has Honda engineers in Japan. It, it's a it, it's a Japanese company. That's, yeah, that's the way we would put it. it so it's you're really not, just pissing up the same rope. Yeah, but it's a, it's it. They've got an opportunity, as well as Calix, as well as uh -huh. Honda. So it's three different versions or three different companies. Because I couldn't figure out why Honda would bring out that experimental frame, which that was a Honda. Mm -hmm. Their original frame, sorry, so the original frame, their experimental one, the TSR one, and the Calyx. So they've had, what, four frames this year to try. And they still can't figure it out. Now, you know, what an Abbe says that they know what the problem is. <laughs> they know what the problem is, but they don't know how long it's going to take to fix yeah. it. Yeah, they know what the problem is. The Honda is a weak company. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fix shit. <laughs> well, look, yeah, look. But it's got to a pretty critical level, and I like did a video uh, in in my view about it, and I was like, you know, their Honda and Yamaha are in the same situation. Just Yamaha are, are faced with just an engineering problem. Do you know yeah, what I mean? it's just a, they went the wrong you know, direction. They're not as weak yeah. in engineering as this. But, this it, 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 but it's take take skill set all of this out of it. They have a singular problem that. It's engineering or it's bike related. Mm -hmm. But Honda have a major problem. It's because it is bike related, but also it's a massive internal problem. So right. So higher up in Honda's throw the like the fucking senior things are are being told a completely different story by HRC representatives in the business from what's actually going on within the team. And I think that's why that number two, Wananabe, was it Wananabe? No, he's president. That, that's why Mark had that meeting with the number two guy in Honda. It is not number two guy in HRC. It is number two guy Honda exec. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So it's, yeah. it's like it, it was a big meeting. And when I look I at that, they did that, the, 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 that was a smoke and mirror show, knowing that Marquez like, loves to have his ego stroked. Mm. Maybe it was, but also Mark's attitude since that meeting has been very different. Very, very, very different. Mm. Now, what I, what, and what I mean by very different is he crashed in Magello after the day of that meeting and he started giving the gestures to the bike. Remember when he went off? Yes, yes. And he's, now, he didn't give it the finger, but he was looking at it going like, what the absolute fuck? Like, do you know what he I mean? did give it the finger. That was in Saxon Ring. Oh, I'm sorry. I have my I have my gestures mixed up there, yeah. Yes, yes, you do. Um, and then in Saxon Ring, he gave it the finger. Mm. Uh, and then it fucking bit him again. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Instant karma is what I call it. Don't tell me fuck the off. I, the I, I, <laughs> fuck you, I'm going to launch you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, look, I think, there, I think there, there's that, but I think there's massive, massive internal problems structurally with within the Honda team because HRC are saying, oh, yeah, we've got it and fucking whatever. The, the boys in senior Honda are looking at it now going, what the fuck are you doing? I know it's a protected department, but if you're not going to pull your fingers out of your arse, mm -hmm. there's going to be a thing. And then I was actually sitting down last night with a beer, and I was like, what do Honda actually need to do? Well, uh, you know, don't want my answer. They need to get passion. Because Christ, their production bikes aren't even are, are, are losing, getting cut and, and, and slashed and but well, you know, yeah, I mean, HR, HRC don't give a fuck about selling bikes, right? They don't. They don't care, right? They they're racing. They're racing. That's what it should be. But they're they're mixed together, and 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 so, the, the company as a whole just doesn't is in this, isn't in the bikes anymore. So what does HRC need to? And that was that's going back. And my simple answer is fuck everyone out. Get fucking rid of everyone. Yeah. Oh Who's yeah. There? New project, bring the right people in. Invest in the right people. The problem is, is that they're going to probably have to move that that 
element of it from Japan. And Japan, Honda HRC or Honda execs higher up are going to have to learn to lose a little bit of that control. Because mm -hmm. all they seem to want to do is control, in HRC, want to control what is happening with the bike. But the problem is, is that you're probably not going to get 40, 50 of the top engineers in the world to move to Japan. You may get them to move Americas, Europe, do you know what I mean? Not Japan. Right. And, and like yep. I said, Japan is not known for their great engineers. But that, yeah, exactly. Period. So yeah. I think I think they need to they need to fuck everyone out. They need to understand then. And it's kind of going to what I said about take and I'll use o Johan Zarko. Johan Zarko is a good writer, but he is no fucking alien at all, right? No, but no. If you can get Johan Zarko up towards the front, top five, mm -hmm. right? Consistently, can you imagine what an alien would do on that? I.e., Peko, Basecki, Martin. Do you know what I mean? They'll bring it to the next level. Well, your best but, test riders are typically. Fast, but not really quick. You know, uh, world superbike, uh, Leon Haslam, best superbike tester ever, right? Fast, but not really fast. You, you get my... You get, you know I, I don't know, I don't know, man. Fucking look at KTM and Danny Pedrosa. Well, Danny... Pedrosa is an is a, is a exception, I think, to the rule. He, he is, but he, he just shows you the rule, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like Pedroza, age wise, age wise, he's a little bit past it, right? Just mm -hmm. a little. But he's still running in top five, top seven mm -hmm. places on the grid in a wild card. <laughs> right? And guys, he's little. Oh my! Not to, not to change his start. You're, yeah. you're, they're talking. He's talking to other riders, and I go, Christ, the other riders, 135 pounds, and he's like. Looking up to him, like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, how little is this son of a bitch? But KTM are going to be in an issue quite soon because when Danny decides to retire, who do they got? Folger, who's fucking tail end Charlie. Right. Do you know what Folger. I mean? Huh? Folger. Folger, yeah. He's, Folger. He, he's, not, he's not fast <laughs> at all. You know, like he 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 was slowest of, of all the test riders out there today, and yet and last week he was last. Do you know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, they need, from my view, Honda need to get a good test rider. They need to fuck out the majority of the engineers that they have. GG Delinia even said that Yamaha and Honda's problem was that they listened to the feedback of champions. But what they forgot when they were listening to the feedback of champions is that the feedback of champions, they can mask the problems of bikes where normal riders can't. Yes, yes. And that, that goes back to what we said originally of you, you can't have the rider rely on the, on the rider's skills to make a race bike. Like Honda has Marquez. As soon as he his riding skill is so much so much superior to the, everybody else, Honda says, "Okay, it's good enough to win when he's on it. That's it." And then they cut the funding off. So you saw so, then you have a crap bike with a with a with a, uh, a a super alien rider, so nobody else can touch it. As soon as Marquez goes away, that's it. The whole the whole program's down to tubes. It is and it isn't. <laughs> It is that they're going to find a hell of a lot more problems than they originally found. Look, like we've always found with MotoGP, you know, like when we said Rossi was going, it was the end of the fucking world, and then Fabio Quadraro popped up for Yamaha, and everything the world was right again. Do you, do you know what I mean? So look, there's always there's always someone coming along. To be fair, right? Oh, uh, there is always. But not not Marquez speed. Yeah, but Marquez. Let's be fair. 
Marquez hasn't finished a fucking race this year. Uh, yeah. Great being fast. Stay mm -hmm. on the fucking bike. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Being fast and then falling doesn't fucking win you a championship. Yeah, but you can't blame it. him for that. And the thing has square wheels. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Can you or can you not? Do you know what I mean? Like, let's be fair. They brought in, well, we now know four different chassis this year, right? They have fucking no data on race finishing from Marquez this year. Just one sprint race, two, maybe a couple of sprint races. No races, no, no race data. They've crash data, plenty of fucking crash data, right? No fucking race data in my view, right? And I blame Marquez for that because Marquez should be, yes, practice, push the fucking thing to the limit, take it back four steps if they needed to get it mm -hmm. home. Do you know what I mean? Understand it, get it home. If he's a world champion and he's trying to bring Honda out of the fucking barn, but every single time that he gets onto that bike, he's like, here, hold my beer. Yeah. And no one, I, I, when, you know, when he's that fast, can anybody else use his data? When he has a style that's that unique, I always wondered, right? You can't, no. I mean, his style is what? There's two other people who use his style Kenny Roberts Jr. Or senior, excuse me, and Freddie Spencer. That was a long time ago. It was, but like, you see, there was a comment actually today, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna address this because someone said it was given out about the. They were saying, you know, they geared the bike towards Mark, and they were like, oh well, if Mark, if they did that, how was it that Mark won the bike or won the championship his first year on the bike? So the Honda has been going downhill realistically since Danny Pedrosa yep. left, right? So when Mark got on that bike, that was a Danny Pedrosa developed a bike that Mark was able to take to another level. Yep. So Mr. Person who was out there, that's the reason why Marquez won it in mm -hmm. his first year is because he already had, he the bike was already fairly solid. But he made it fast. Yeah, and and from two thousand nine on, they 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 developed the bike around the tires, not the rider. They were just changing the settings. Yeah, no. The only bit I disagree with you, and that is that they would design it a little bit towards Mark's feel on the bike mm -hmm. towards the tires. Yeah, not Pedro. This is how it is. So, and what you could see, especially when Pedroza left, was that it did go towards how Mark was wanting to write it. And the same thing with the Yamaha. You know, remember, it was it 2020 or 2019? Fabio spitting the fucking dummy because the bike wasn't doing what he wanted. Franco, was it 2020? Franco did a fucking amazing championship, finished second, do you know what I mean, on an old bike. Fabio was losing the fucking plot. The next minute they changed it, Fabio was fucking flying again. Franco couldn't yep. do fuck off, right? So, so look, that's, in my view... You know, Gigi is right. They needed. They actually needed to build the bike towards Franco, just say, for example, and Johan Mir, to their riding styles, both companies, and let the other two aliens take it and move it on a bit more. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. realistically, fuck everyone out. And, that, and that's my thing of, with Honda. Fuck everyone out. Clean slate. Too average or not average, ordinary, fast, but not alien. Yeah, and so, bring back um, that's, that my old yeah, chest. No, 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 fucking open testing is not going to fucking do it. Yeah, yes, yes, we are. It's um, bring back to open testing. They got it. I mean, it would do so much better for everyone across the board. It's, it's never going to happen. <laughs> Just it's, look, look, stop being a fucking testing fanboy. I am. I'm a testing fanboy. It just makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's never, ever, ever going to happen. You know, actually, as we know, they're trying to reduce the amount of fucking testing. It's, it's by just taking, it's by just taking more and more time. Ahead, you know? Uh, uh, it's, it is interesting. Now, there was a couple of people there, I don't know, saying something about Jack Miller and they don't look... I personally, I... 
I like Jack. I think he's probably one of the most open. No, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There, right? If he's thinking it, he's saying it, right? And you got to be fair to him, right? You know what I mean? I think it's for me. I think I think it's brilliant. It's a breath of fresh air. Do I really care whether he's going to win a race or a championship? That I no, just absolutely he's just love got it. a nice character to have, like a I just like a absolutely side show. Yeah, but I absolutely love he'll bolt on the soft tires and he'll fucking ride it like he stole it for 12 laps and see where yeah. he ends up. <laughs> you, look, that's what <laughs> racing is. And uh, and and for me, like, what would you prefer to listen to in a, in a thing after where someone's saying, yeah, man, I fucking rode shit today and da 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 right? Mm-hmm. Or would you prefer to hear someone say, well, the bike really wasn't going and I wasn't able then to give my best because, you know, I couldn't feel the front end of the bike and all of this He's like, ah, some of small few issues in the bike, you know, but fucking I rode shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's, for me, it's just, that's what I want to hear. It, it, there's a bit of truth. There's a bit of honesty. And he's a person that you would sit down in the pub and have a pint with and a fucking great chat about bikes. Y- yes. I mean? and, that's, uh, and that's... Did you ever hear him on the interviews from when he was young? Oh, they're a blast. Yeah, oh, they're yeah. a blast. I couldn't yeah. make out in a woman's prison with a carton of cigarettes that day. I kept screwing up. And top tire went, front tire went. I didn't know what I was doing. Exactly. And if that's what you that's that that's look, that's that's what fans want, you know what I mean? That's to be able to like look at Pasecki climbing up the fucking T V stand yesterday, giving hearts to people and whatever. It's that little bit of interaction rather than a fucking mm-hmm. I don't know, sterile. It's a yeah, yeah. You know, Joe, it's like like a sterile interview, and it's just like, you know, break down those walls, get those fans in. You know, like I'll be honest, you know, when when we were at the the Northwest Two Hundred Road Race, my young fella got a picture with uh, Peter Hickman, and so the way, like when you were walking past him, and I I caught him just before he was going out, and I asked him for, I was like. I was like, hey, Pete, would, would you start for a picture with him? But I wasn't ready to take the picture. Do you know what I mean? I was getting the phone out of the pocket, whatever. But he, he took the few minutes and he said, he, like, he was talking to a young fella and he's like, oh, how many races have you been to? Is this your first? What's your thing? What's your da, 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 da. But that few minutes of interaction while I was getting it was just normal, chilled out, relaxed, and whatever. And I took the picture and I drew whatever and said thank you and whatever and off he went. But then later on, when we I said to the young fellow, I said, John, will we go buy a T-shirt just to mark that you are here or whatever? And he's like, yeah. And he went straight over and he bought a Peter Hickman T-shirt. And he's like, Julian, I was just clued in to so give a little bit of time to the fans. Be real. Yep. Your fans will pay you back multiple times. No. Yes. I won't say, I won't say my young fellow is a massive fan, but like he went and bought the T-shirt because mm-hmm. he, he spent some time... So the time I, think, right. I know I, this guy. I know yes. Exactly. I, that, me the race. Yes. And then this this is why I think I have that little thing for Jack then is like I'd love to sit down and have a beer with Jack. Do you know what I Because mean? right. I'm sure it'd be fucking entertaining. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't be sterile, it wouldn't be fucking boring. And no, Peko and all of them do like to party. Do you remember like the old drink driving incident and all of this? Oh, yeah, that they, cool. they, yeah, yeah. But they do like to party, do you know what I mean? But again, Jack just there's no frills, do you know what I mean? It's it's it is what it is. Um, but yeah, my old buddy as well, Augusto Fernandez, he had a good race. Do you know what I tell you? Oh, you know, I, I heard he's going. He's on the way out for. Uh, no, I, I, I felt for you for with the uh, uh, Pedro Aca- Pedro Acosta that's going to fill his shoes. So, the Acosta situation. So. KTM have till the 30th to exercise their option on Acosta. Okay. But Acosta has already now said that I will not be doing another year in Moto2. Okay. Now, I think this is just a pressure thing. But I was looking at Augusto Fernandez today. And... When did you ever see them put the rider cam on a rookie? Oh, I can't. I never took notice. It's very rare that they put the rider cam on a rookie. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So 
I was very interested in that. And I think, look, I, I still think he's he's showing the potential. Is it him that is under pressure? I don't know. I don't think so. A lot of people are saying he's the easy, he's the easy victim. Or he's the easy one here, but I don't know. I think I think KTM, who are looking at that, they need to nurture some young talent, right? Because Miller probably has a year or two left. So right. I mean? Paul, I would think the same. So you know, they're not going to get rid of Brad unless Brad finds a Ducati, which he could find at Pramac. Do you know what I mean? And then I'm like going, hmm. You know? But I don't see Augusto Fernandez as a sensation. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I, I see him the same as Basecki. You think that you, you hold him up that high? I do. I, do. I genuinely think that his talent, he's very green. But I think he has he's showing more talent than DG, for example. Oh yes. Yeah. So there's not another rookie that you can compare him against. You know, like if you look at people that are back towards the back end of where where he would be, like realistically, you would never expect a rookie anywhere near the top ten this first season, regardless of the fucking bike he's on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you're a super alien. You know. He's had a couple of solid top tens this year. He's had a fourth as well, I think. Do you know what I mean? And a genuine fourth in that one. But again, you know, he's on a bike that not even okay, Brad Brad has taken two was it two wins this year in sprint races? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's not so far behind him. It will be interesting to see when Paul comes back. How far Paul is ahead of him, but I think it's actually Paul is going to be under pressure. I was going to say I don't think Paul. I, I looking at his injuries, I don't see him doing much of anything for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. And I think well, that, saying, that, that's a he took a hell of a hit. He did take a hell of a hit, and uh, I suppose where. Where I am on, on this is that for me, when I'm looking at it, I'm like going, yeah, you know, the Gas Gas team is, was realistically designed like the Tech Tua team was to bring the, the younger generation up. Like when you look at it last year, when they signed Paul, right? You know, they signed Paul, I think, because they lost Oliveira. So to bring a bit of experience into that team. Yes. Yes. But I think Fernandez is doing a solid enough job to kind of say, well, maybe do we need Paul? Because they like they don't. In my no, view, they, they don't. Right. They have they have Binder and they have Miller. Right? Right. Miller will probably be gone in two years. It can still go to Guess Guess. God, it's think. a shame because he took such a beat in trying to, you know. You know, it took us such a beating at Honda, and he took us such a beating at the uh, at, at Gas Gas. I mean, but he was he was always the one. Like I remember, I remember years ago, it was all about Polo Spagro. Next big thing, Polo Spagro. Yep. Yeah, it wasn't you know Alexis. That? It wasn't Alexis. It, remember, yeah. it was yeah. Paul was the fast one. Alexis was the brother. Like you know, yeah, Alexis was the brother. Yeah, and that was it. And it's kind of flipped one hundred and eighty degrees now. Like, and. I just think, yeah. And then, look, you could have the Marquez situation going to KTM. They could be putting fucking Miller or Binder. Right. Or whatever, do you know what I mean? Um, now, Mark is actively looking, right? I don't know, did you read the, the latest press, but there was a, a thing with Pooch, an interview with Pooch, and basically said, you know, he is confident. <laughs> yeah. this, is a, this is a fucking Pooch moment now, right? Yeah, yeah. He is confident that Mark will be with um, Honda in 2024 because he has a contract. <laughs> However, he also knows that Honda, or if a rider doesn't want to be there with Honda, then they don't have to be. So that's kind of to me to say that there is negotiations about him trying to get out. And listen, Mark has enough money and has enough potential people, sponsors, etc., 
to pay that fee to get him out of it, right? If yes. if that if that is there, I was then thinking, you know, I think it could be any team, but I yeah. think it's going. I think it's going to be. It has to be works. I don't think Mark is going to go to. If there's an option there to get on a Ducati, a fast Ducati, of course he yeah. would take it. Now I will note that both Grassini and VR46 have re-signed for next year, but they don't know what um, they don't know what uh, spec bikes they're going to get, which I find interesting because VR46 is pushing for factory equipment next year. Yeah. Um, so look, I think I think it's going to be quite quite interesting. Uh, what happens? Could Mark go to Aprilia? I I definitely say yes. Like, is that like when I look at Aprilia's performance this season, especially, are they really missing a rider? I think they're missing that, a that alien. Yes, they are. I said that a couple of months ago. Remember, and I mm-hmm. looked at it today, and I said they need a, they need a rider. You know, they, they need they need an alien, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because hey, let's face it, Ali uh, Espargaro, uh, Alexis Espargaro was never another one where he was never never panned out to be that fast. You, you know, yeah. He said he was the also brother, right? And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden he gets he gets a podium, and it's supposedly made him faster. Well, it did make him faster. You know, the bike was just better. The bike is better, and and this year's bike is worse. Do you know what I mean? And it's hard to tell. Contrast, they got people broken up, right? The the, the the it's you know, and the competition's gotten better. So is is it the same bike with broken up riders? No, I, I disagree on that now because they've changed too much on the bike. If you look at the pictures between last year's bike and this year's bike from the side, you can't mm-hmm. tell anything. If you look at the side pods, like if you look. If you look up the exhaust pipes of the bike, right, right, you will see the massive difference in the width of the frame of the bike. For example, oh, I, I'm, not telling, I'm not saying it hasn't changed, but when you say has it gotten better or worse, I don't know. For me, it's got worse because they're not able to ride at that level that they were last year. Last year, they were contenders, but they fucked up. This year, they they're, they're just not at the races. You know, like yeah. What is it? Today was Alex Espargaro's first podium of the season. Yeah. It, just show, it just shows you result, like in, in results, they're not getting there. Has Ducati made a massive jump from the 22 to the 23? Absolutely not. Why? Because they're battling against fucking 22s. Do you know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And there's not a lot in them. So, you know, look, yeah, have KT, KTM have made the jump, but I just think, look, if I'm, if I'm honest, I think they, they do need a rider. Who is going to go there? I don't know. Could it be Maverick? Or uh, not Maverick, Fabio? Yeah. Fabio, have a fucking enough. I, now, I don't think Yamaha are going to let him out. And I don't think Honda will willingly let Marquez walk yeah. away either. I, I, see, I would. See, Marquez I, is out. I'm sure. I'd bet my bottom dollar that Mark had an out clause. I'd bet my bottom dollar that Fabio didn't. I wouldn't think so, and I think me and I think a couple of those things. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe that's why Mark fucking fired the manager. Maybe that's why he, Fabio has fired. Yeah, manager. maybe you said that. I thought, who the hell would not get with, with the with the strength that you had in that negotiation? You'd have to be an absolute idiot not to have an out clause. And he said, "Yeah, we got fired after twenty years." I'm going, maybe he did get. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah, maybe he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. That would be yeah. grounds for it. If, if, I, if somebody came with you with all that strength and they said, well, I didn't get an out clause, you'd be like, you, you're fired. Mm-hmm. Like, it would be it. Done. Bam. Yeah. Now, the other thing, which I will note, Fabio sacked or got rid of his manager, but it's not till 2025. Oh, yeah, when I read that, it didn't have a date to it. No, it has a fucking date. From 2025, not 2024. Huh. But Fabio needs a manager to, to conduct his affairs in 2024 for his 2025 season. <laughs> so he has one last deal left in the manager. <laughs> Tell him to look me up. I'm a real prick. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And that was actually another thing that people were saying would, would Bastanini get 
demoted from the factory team to the Pramac team. Just say, for instance, and uh, Martin go, and I was like, not if you know um, Bastanini's manager, Carlo Pranat, or whatever his name is. He's absolutely one of the biggest pricks of a manager. He's brilliant for his talent, <laughs> but he's a prick. Like you could hear Ducati fucking apologizing to him when something fucking happens. <laughs> like yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just like we'll say sorry to keep him fucking sweet. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but look, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's fucking the other thing now is five five long fucking ass weeks without MotoGP. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is ridiculous. The five weeks. What's up with that? They never had five weeks. We just got off of four, four weeks. Week, yeah. Four and yeah. five, nine weeks. Mm-hmm. And we have all these races. You'd think you wouldn't, you know, the last thing you'd think would be, we'll be doing Christmas time. Ho, ho, ho. Go to a motocross. You know, go, go to yeah. Uh, like there's, know. there's still 12 races left, but we're, on, we're only eight races in. Yeah. Like, so, like, how is it fucking halfway through? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> it's another week. Yeah. Uh, well, the North Pole, the, the North Pole uh, Moto GP, you know what I mean? Yeah, Go around with like, sleds. <laughs> sleds, yeah. But yeah, look, I think it's it's going to be, you know, going to be a rough one. Now, look, um, we'll try and do a few bits and pieces. Trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. That's the main one. We want to, get, we want to give away that helmet, don't we? Yeah, we're giving away a helmet. A helmet for our ten. Brand spanking new helmet. Brand spanking new Jake signed helmet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that'll cut, the, that'll cut the value to squat. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, um, yeah. So, yeah. What has happened? Yeah, for me, there's. I think so much is going to happen across this five weeks, though. You know. People will be able to walk away, take a break. Like definitely, the Hondas, Honda riders, the Yamaha riders definitely need both a physical and mental break um, from this season so far. You know, and it's not good for Marquez to go away with his tail between his legs into this break. Well, I think and Fabio, what we're talking about, yeah. If if I was looking at it, just say in recent years when. When his life was fully revolved around racing, I would have said, yeah, 100%. But now that he has the misses, do you know what I mean? He had a bit of distraction. Um, Who has the misses? Marquez. Marquez is engaged yeah, yeah. now or not. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, Did he get married or did he just have another girlfriend? No, he's engaged to her, I think. Oh, oh yeah. That's the... yeah, yeah. You can be still... engaged forever. It doesn't cost you a dime for that. I know. Well, it cost him a dime for the ring anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, uh, that's cheap. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know, but like what I what I mean is that, you know, I think there's a bit of a distraction there rather than him sitting at home now fucking playing with his dingling and then fucking wanting to go racing. Do you know what I mean? Right. Uh, whereas I think she'll, she, she'll distract him, let's just call it a small bit. And, but look, I think... Yeah, I think five weeks is, is a bit too long, but I, I think there's an awful lot of deals going to be done during this five weeks. I think uh, a lot's going to be sorted out. I was on the understanding that Ducati, a lot of the stuff with Ducati was supposed to be sorted by Saxon Ring. It hasn't been announced yet, but um, I think, yeah, I think over the next couple of weeks we're going to hear a good lash in that sa- settle down and, and sorted. Uh but other than that, I suppose we'll go happy to our holidays and uh, and uh, chill out. Yep. All right. Sure. We we'll, uh, we we'll leave it there for this week, Jake. Yep. Thank I'll you get my new bikes out and go riding and ride again. Rider like you stole her. Yep. Put all the <laughs> new accessories on there. Yep. This is the fit. Good man. Good man. Radio. We we'll leave it there for this week. Thank you very much, everyone, and we will see you all very very soon. Take it easy, guys.